Hi everyone, welcome to my vlog free, and I'll start by defining what I understand coaching philosophy to be. Parkin's definition in 2009 includes personable content. I've highlighted principles and values from this definition as I feel they are the greatest effect on us as practitioners. Implementing our truths and attitudes to drive one's philosophy that should develop over time, which can also be descriptive of the coaching process. I've actually been asked about my philosophy in interviews previously, so I've developed this statement over the past few years, but it is to strive for excellence in movement pattern literacy that manufactures resilient athletes in developing the capabilities to physically dominate their opponent while evolving as an individual. The first part of my statement refers to movement quality, which I assess through adaptations of the FMS and coaching eye. This mix is sufficient for the current setting I'm in, but may need to be developed. This interest probably formed from my background in physical education and PT, and having an injury tormented development myself made the biomechanics of the body intriguing for me. A second large influence on my philosophy would be the introduction of Lloyd and Oliver's YPD model, in which they look at developing physical attributes through maturational status by the timing of PHV, which I could relate to the athletes I was working with. This ignited my passion for attempting to produce strong, young athletes. Resilience and physical domination factors of the philosophy were created by readings around strength, power and speed training through listening to practitioners like Path, Boyle and Wild as well as my own training experience. The YPD cemented that strength training for any young athlete if done correctly would be beneficial to them in their sport. Strength underpins everything for me as I see it as the biggest contributor to becoming robust and ready to perform. Microdosing aspects of the model and building good foundations was a short-term goal, but what next? Five years ago, I was then introduced to weightlifting by my mentor. This impacted me greatly through the designs of my programme, needs of an athlete, and furthermore, what I was trying to achieve. Education around the force velocity curve opened my eyes to needs analysis, having not found a sport yet that doesn't benefit from an aspect of it. My thoughts progressed onto fitting derivatives into my programme, which was a thankless task as it took time to build confidence when teaching more complex skills. Still, an unapologetic end goal that underpins the core message of my philosophy. The second and third elements of the philosophy overlap, but the overall bias feeds into periodising overload of physical qualities through an evidence-based approach. Turner and Comfort showed me that not all research has quality, and this master's has confirmed that, but finding quality evidence to support your beliefs is accepted e.g. triphasic training. After all, the goal has always been to allow the athletes to express their skills without fatigue, but of course, one size does not fit all, so one would need to adapt his style for different individuals. The finale of my philosophy relates to developing both myself and my athletes as individuals, acquiring positive tools to be ready for things life may throw at you inside and outside of sport. This is expressed through building relationships, using differing styles for differing needs, but fundamentally one that essentially cares about the people he's working with. Building rapport, inevitably, to produce the best performance. Yes. 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 Using a humanistic approach throughout my coaching, which is personable, sometimes using differing styles to produce different outcomes. Here is an example of not always spoon-feeding athletes and using a method of discovery. The application of implementing my philosophy is an ongoing process, but I've tried to outline some of my thoughts and considerations when planning and reviewing, which you can see on the left graphic. On the right is an example of a strength speed derivative, the hang power clean, an exercise with strength and power benefits for young athletes. This example is a macro cycle plan of how I would develop this throughout the year, with small increments breaking down a more complicated lift. Developing as a coach is something I'd always relished, and I think my enthusiasm is shown in my coaching. You may have guessed, but it's not all roses. I've had some reality checks along the way already. For example, trying to implement derivatives into a small space, underloading players through fear of injury, having my plan scrapped by a coach and having to adapt. And these are all lessons that have shaped me into a better coach than I was previously. The biggest learning curves I've experienced are realising that you need to be become a tool for the athlete, part of a toolbox as such. Just because your squats increase doesn't always mean their performance has, and being part of a multidisciplinary team, especially in a team sport environment, is key. Ships are always safe in the harbour and eggs need to be cracked to make an omelette are two quotes that I've heard that relate hugely to my development of my once philosophy beliefs. Now developing through an athlete-centred approach, team sports has progressed my cultural understanding, organisation and delivery of messages. So from strength training to my strengths, I try to find a way to get the best performance out of the group. Thank you for watching and I hope you can see my core values and beliefs from this video.